Thompson driven off the line by Westbrook finds Wiggins in the corner for three. It is short rebound goes to Harden. So another another bad loss and. Uh, today, the biggest story about about with the Warriors is that Andrew Wiggins actually got benched for, well, Brandon Pojemski or Jonathan Kuminga, however you want to look at it, right? Because Draymond has been suspended indefi- indefinitely. So the starting lineup consisted of Kuminga and Potts together. And Andrew Wiggins came off the bench today. And I like that. I like that, even though I feel like maybe Moody and Kuminga together would have been a nicer choice. You understand why they want pots on the floor so much, man. He is just a magnet to the ball. He does a lot of the little things well. And to be quite honest with you, even though he's small, he's still one of the better perimeter defenders of ours. And with the perimeter defense lacking, you kind of get it in a way. And like I said, he, he is a better rebounder than Kuminga. He's a better rebounder than Moody. So... That that helps him a lot in my opinion, and not just that because he just makes he just makes a lot of stuff happen on the floor. You you rarely miss him on the floor with pots, even though today he was two of eleven. I did not shoot the ball particularly well, had some rough turnovers. Still, I mean the stat sheet, four points, seven rebounds, two assists, three steals, one blocks, and four of those rebounds were offensive rebounds. Like Potts is a stable in this goddamn rotation staple, and I hope they continue rolling with him. And I thought they should have played a little more Kuminga, a little more Moody, who played just 15 minutes today, which I don't know why you're playing Wiggins 22 minutes when Moody is right there with 16, especially when you look at the rotations today. Moody uh, came in a little later after Wiggins and, you know, I felt like he should have been the first guy off the bench, maybe, even though that is Chris Paul. Um... I feel like he should have played those minutes. Those minutes right here that I'm showing you. Uh, pardon me. That I'm showing you right here. Uh, those should have been played by Moody all in my opinion. Just like he did here. And he should have been out there closing this game instead of Chris Paul. Chris Paul wasn't good. Uh, I mean, he wasn't bad, but he wasn't good. And that should have been Moody closing in my opinion. And it's... Is it politics? I don't know, because Chris Paul is obviously solid, but there should have been Moses Moody on the floor, especially this late. And unfortunately, Trace Jackson Davis has not gotten his opportunity well, even though today I don't think it was really his fault. He played at the start of the second quarter of it uh, with Wiggins, who has just been horrible on the floor, and you had such a small lineup with Chris Paul, Clay, and Brandon Pojemski out there. At the start of the second quarter, when you look at it, uh, it just didn't make much sense, and it was mostly Harden, and they were cooking us from the three-point line. Man, Harden was out there just looking like Harden of old. He was looking like MVP Harden out there, really. And that speaks about the perimeter defense. Steph has regressed defensively today, or do you want to say regressed, or he's just old and carrying too much of a load offensively, which caught up with him today overall. He was 5 of 17, and you can see that he's more tired, and he has a rougher time taking shots. Could be part of a bad shot selection in a way, and I think it's a mixture of everything, really, and having to carry too much of a load. Clay finally came along and had a good shooting game, 30 points, 5 assists, 8 of 12, and he played really good even though the shots he was taking were not that different from the shots he's been taking all season. He had a good game and unfortunately, I'm not sure that's a really good thing in my opinion because those shots that Clay is taking, I'm not sure that are that they are there. He'll have the nights where he's hitting them, but so far this season, which is already 24 games, which is essentially one... Th- is it actually a one-third of the season already? It is one-third of the season already, right? And... Over the course of the first, what is it? Not quarter, one third. I don't know how to say uh, the third alone. Uh, anyway, he has not shown the ability to actually make those shots consistently this season. So happy for Clay shooting well. Hopefully it continues, but I'm not that optimistic about it. Looney. I know Trace was not great, but I still wish we would have given him at least 10 minutes for Moody's, I mean, Luna's 10, when defensively he just is a show of himself. He's not as good defensively, and that 
loses half his value as around him even though today he was okay uh, he still finishes really badly he holds the ball too much and crowds the space a little too much this season man and Wiggins four of nine he had some spurs but every time he shoots the ball I feel like I don't I don't even have a hope it's going in right that's how bad it's gotten with Wiggins so that is that but Overall, some silver linings in a way because we saw, you know, Kuminga actually hold his own in the starting lineup. You want more rebounds and less fouls, but he's still getting to me a little bit of a rookie whistle, if you may, may if you, if you may, uh, is that a word? Is that a good uh, sentence? I don't know, but I feel like he's getting still like he's a rookie whistle. Yeah, I repeated myself here. <laughs> Self-awareness, baby. Uh, but... I felt like he could have played a little more. The same goes for Moody. At least he closed the game again, which I liked. Nonetheless, I think Steve needs to continue to mix it up more. And we barely saw Steph uh, coming up pick and rolls, even though he started. So I felt like that was a little bit of a waste. And like I said, Chris Paul was solid. And I liked those minutes. He played here early in the fourth, but I felt like he didn't need to be there for the closing minutes, especially with the way Moody was going in the fourth quarter. And in the second half, because he scored... Did he score all his points in the second half? He had nine points, all of them were in the fourth quarter. Am I right? Uh, nah, five of them were in the fourth quarter. But he was really good uh, in between those... Uh, in, the, in that second spot he played. And he still gets just 16 minutes, which just doesn't make much sense. Especially when Andrew Wiggins is out there for 22. And his defense has been as bad as his offense, in a way. And shout out to the Clippers, man. Kawhi was really good. Harden had one hell of a game, 28, 7, and 15. He was absolutely sensational today. Norman Pavel off the bench was great. I thought Russ changed the game in the first quarter when he, I mean, in, in his first half stint when he came off the bench, he changed the complexity of this game to me. With his energy and rebounding, he kinda is playing the GP2 role for them. And of course, we had a hard time stop, stopping Harden. We, we are too slow. We don't have a point of, point of attack defense, really. Kuminga has the tools. He's not all the way there. Wiggins has lost his step defensively. Steph has been worse defensively. Clay is solid defensively one-on-one, -on -one, but really bad defensively in, uh, you know, anything else, really. And Pojemski is essentially our... Is Pojemski actually our best point of attack defender? Because I feel like he holds his own really well, but he's just too small to actually defend them, like as well as Kuminga or Wiggins could, right? So there are some issues. And yeah, Wiggins was benched, like I said, and Steve Kerr said, uh, where was it? Steve Kerr said that uh, this will continue. This will continue for, I don't know how many games, but he said at least some games. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be here. Shout out to Golden State of Mind. Um, they're, they're awesome. Shout out to them, especially Joe Vire. But... Uh, hopefully Clay continues shooting well and Mike Dunleavy said we'll see how we do these next 10 to 15 games and we'll see you know the Warriors could look for trades because when you look at the standings we're already in a bit of a shithole because we're 11th and already three games back behind the Suns and when you look at the conference right you don't envision actually any of the first six teams falling or at least not me Unless Luca gets hurt, then the Mavericks obviously would fall off probably, but uh, that's counting on injuries. The same could go for Denver with if, you know, Jokic gets injured, right? So that's literal bullshit in a way. And the Kings and the Lakers look really good. You have the Clippers actually on a roll and they've been, they've been playing really well, man. They've gotten it together, especially defensively where they look great. Kawhi has been balling offensively also. Harden has been more comfortable. So that's awesome for them, right? And then Houston has been defending their ass off. They are great defensively, man. They, you know, Fred Van Fleet and Dylan Brooks with the coaching of Ima Yudoka and the schemes has really just blossomed that defense so well. The Pelicans are dangerous. The Suns are dangerous, right? So the Warriors are already in a horrible spot right now, right? They started 6-2, and two, so that's 4-12 and 12 since. And, like, when you look at the schedule, uh, Brooklyn is going to be really tough. They have a lot of, you know, speed, youth, length, 
and you know the versatility defensively then you have portland who already gave us trouble even though that should be a win right should doesn't mean equal will be then we have the celtics at home which i kind of am confident about that game but is that good? I don't know, but you, you know, I shouldn't expect us to win that really. Then the Wizards, who have been horrible, but no Draymond and Jordan Poole revenge game could be a hilarious outcome. Then Portland again, like, we should go 4-1 and one here if we want to make something serious, right? Because then Denver again, Miami, Dallas, Orlando, like, the schedule will not get easier. And you could say that Portland twice... Washington and Brooklyn in there, even though Brooklyn is really solid, don't get me wrong, is the easiest part of the schedule you'll have maybe all year anymore, uh, anyway. Like, will there actually be any, any better schedules? I don't think so, so I'm not going to look that up anymore. But anyway, that was my take. Uh, a little bit hectic because I've been resting. I've been feeling kind of under the weather. So that is that. And as always, be kind to yourself and to others. Probably I'll do an across the NBA today. Hope you are well and just be baby. Love.